Hey folks, Mr. MathLog here, and this lesson is called Thousandths. So we're starting Chapter 3. So we just completed Chapters 1 and 2, actually just Chapter 2. Uh, and then so here we're going to be moving decimals on the right, uh, or talk about numbers on the right of the decimal. So how can we describe the relationship between two decimal place value positions? So uh, we'll talk about that here. So thousandths are smaller or smaller parts than hundredths are. If one hundred is one hundredth is divided into ten equal parts, each part it becomes thousands. So here's, uh, we'll show you examples of both. So here we have a big square right here. And we're going to divide this square into 10 equal columns or rectangles. Okay, I'm going to divide them into columns. Columns go up and down right there, okay? So there's 10 equal columns. There's uh, 10 going across right there, okay? So let's shade one of those. So I'm going to shade it in that color right there, okay? So what part of this uh, of the whole is this shaded rectangle. Write that part as a decimal and a fraction. Okay, well this is one out of the ten that's shaded. So this would be one-tenth, and one-tenth is written as point one. This is in the tenths position. Okay, remember it goes uh, tenths, hundreds, thousands. Remember that doing that from, a, uh, I think, uh, fourth grade, I think. Okay, so now we're going to divide each of these rectangles into 10 squares. So that means we're going to draw lines that way. So each of those rectangles are now have 10 squares. So now we have, we have 10 of these columns, and each one of these columns has 10 of these squares. So there's 100 squares right here, okay? So use a second color to shade one of these squares. So I um, shaded that one right there. You can shade whatever one you want. So what part of the whole is this shaded square? Okay, well, this is 1 out of 100. So it's one hundredth, and that would be written written as 0 .01. Okay, there's the tenths, there's the hundredths right there. So this is one hundredths, and so in this fraction, one hundredths right there. Okay, you can hear a big truck driving by. I'm sitting out in my truck right now. All right, so now what we're going to do is take one of these hundredths squares and enlarge it, because it's too small to do it that way. So here's this one square enlarged right here. And um, uh, it's, uh, we're going to uh, divide this up into 10 equal rectangles I'm choosing. So I'm going to do rectangles going this way. I'm going to do 10 of them right there. Okay, so there they are right there. Okay, now, uh, if each hundredth square is divided into 10 equal rectangles, how many parts will it have? Well, that's just this guy right here. This has 10. This one would have 10. This one would have 10. All, there's 100 of them that would have 10. 100 times 10 would be 1,000. So there'd be 1,000 of them, 1,000 of them right there. Okay, so let's use a third color to shade one of the enlarged hundredths square. Okay, so we'll, we'll take one of these and shade it. I think I shaded it in red. Yep, I shaded it in red right there. So what part of, of the whole is the shaded rectangle? So how this is 1 out of 1,000 or 1 thousandths, and so 1 thousandths is written as 0 .001. Okay, this is the tenths, this is the hundredths, this is the thousandths. This says 1 thousandths because it ends in the thousand spot. This also says 1 thousandths. THS, they always have THS on them, you guys. Okay, so that little figure right there is 1 thousandths. That one is 1 hundredths, and that one is 1 tenth right there. All right, so there are 10 times as many hundredths as there are tenths. Explain how the model showed this, okay? So for each tenth of a rectangle, there were 10 hundredths squares inside of there, okay? That's how that showed us. All right, so let's draw a couple of conclusions. We'll do them one at a time. So we'll do this first one here. Let's just slide that up. So uh, explain what each shaded part of our model in the investigation uh, section shows. Tongue twister. Uh, what fraction can we write that relation in, uh, uh, that relates uh, each shaded part to the next greater shaded part? Okay. All right, so we'll do that second sentence after this. So first we divided uh, the whole into tenths right here. So we divided it into this tenth right here. So there was ten of these um, columns going down. Okay. Then we divided the tenths into tenths. So then we cut each one of these into tenths going this way. And that gave us this one right here. And it made the hundredths square. Then we took each hundredths square and we enlarged it right here. And we divided that into tenths again. And since this is a hundredth, we did uh, a tenth of a hundredth, making it the thousand squared. So this was the thousand squared. So uh, uh, what fraction can can we write that relates each shaded part to the next greater shaded part? Well, we know that one tenth is ten of the hundredths right here, because there were ten hundredths in there. Okay, and then in this little um, uh, this guy right here in a thousandths. Um, uh, one tenth is a hundred of the thousands right here. 
see here's a thousandth right here and there's a hundred of them right here okay so that would be the uh, the fraction that we can relate to sort of an equation which one's bigger than the other one all right identify and describe a part of our model that shows the thousandth and explain how we know okay well one thousandth is one tenth of a hundredth right here okay and one tenth of a hundredth is one tenth times a hundredth and one times one is one and ten times a hundred is a thousand so one tenth of one hundredth is a thousandth right there okay so here's one tenth of the hundredth right there and that gave us one thousand so the model helped us that way alright so the relationship of a digit and different place value positions is the same with decimals as it is with whole numbers so it's like multiplying by ten okay so we can write our understanding of place value patterns and place value charts to write decimals that are ten times as much or one tenth of any given decimal tens are easy they made us our compatible numbers in our last chapter you remember that okay so for example right here if this is the decimal right here then the first number is the tenths the second number is the hundredths the third number is the thousandths right here okay remember from the last chapter actually it was chapter one i believe this was ones then it went tens and then it went hundreds thousands ten thousands a hundred thousands and it went millions okay but to the right of the decimal it starts with tenths ths hundredths ths thousands ths okay this is in the hundred spot four hundredths right there okay so this guy is ten times as much as that so how would i write uh, ten times as much as four hundredths well if we multiplied it by ten it would move that decimal over one place to the right so it would become 0.4 okay or 0 0.4 so there it is four uh, tenths right there it's in the tenths position right here okay this side right here is one tenth of that well one tenth of that would just be to move the decimal that way so this would be 0 0.004 okay and that represents four thousandths because it's in the thousandths position all right so what number is ten times as much as four hundredths well four tenths is ten times as much as four hundredths what number is one tenth of four hundredths four thousandths is one tenth of four hundredths okay all right so we're gonna um, uh, use the steps below to complete the table so step one write the given decimal in the place value chart okay well that's already taken care of right here step two says use the place value chart to write a decimal that is ten times as much as the given decimal okay well if I multiply this by ten all it does is move the decimal one place to the right so this becomes point three move this one place to the right this becomes one move this one place to the right this becomes point zero seven okay now when we do one tenth so use the place value chart to write one tenth of the given decimal so when I take one tenth of this that makes it move to the left so if I move it to the left this will become point zero zero three move it to the left this becomes point zero one move it to the left this becomes point zero 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 seven okay all right so uh, describe a pattern you see when you move one decimal place value to the right and one decimal place value to the left okay well when we move one decimal place value to the right it takes off a zero so see when I moved it one place to the right it took off a zero it subtracts a zero okay and it makes the number gets larger and then when we move the decimal one place to the left so if I moved it one place to the left it adds a zero after the decimal and so the numbers get smaller as we move the decimals to the left. It gets larger when we move it to the right right there. All right, you guys. Hey, all your lessons can be found at uh, www.mrmathblog.com, and you'll see a big yellow ruler at the top, and the fifth grade math link is way over to the far right. Take care, everybody.